Alright guys, I'm back with my review of this week's Shonen Jump manga chapters for Naruto, Bleach, and One Piece. Um, chapters were up early, well not really early, I was up early. And so I wanted to go ahead and do this video because I was kind of late the past couple weeks. And I thought it'd be cool if I got these up ahead of time. So I read the chapters as soon as they were released. I still want to do my Berserk manga video. It's almost like a running joke at this point. I keep saying I'm going to do it and I keep putting it off. But uh, it's kind of like Brodus Clay. But I do want to do that video and I'm going to get that up this week. No matter what. Um, maybe even today. But this week's chapters were really good. Um, Naruto was awesome. Bleach was awesome. One Piece was awesome. Um, out of the three, though, I do have to say that Naruto was probably my favorite chapter this week. Uh, just really good stuff there. Toby attacks, well, Naruto 598 into pieces. Um, Toby attacks by releasing these shurikens um, that he just shoots out. And so these giant shurikens are flying through the air, and B actually catches two of them with his tails to try and save Naruto. But the third one just cuts off one of his tails. And Naruto uses Kurama's chakra. Um, I guess it just like takes the form of his head and bites one of them to stop it. And I thought that was really cool. And Naruto creates a clone. And he uses one of them to create the Bijudama. And then he uses the other one to create the Rasengan. So he goes to attack Toby with the Rasengan. And he vanishes. And Toby thinks that Kakashi did this. He was just too slow. Um, so he thinks he's fine and everything's okay, but the other clone uses the, or the actual Naruto, I'm not sure which one here obviously, but he throws the Bijudama at Toby, and because this attack is so powerful, Toby has to disappear for this. He has to go into the other dimension. So he goes into the other dimension to avoid the attack, and Naruto is there. Kakashi actually sent him into the dimension. So he hits Toby in the face with the Rasengan and just destroys his mask. We don't see who he is. We just see this picture, um, these three panels of Naruto destroying the mask saying, Who are you? And that was it. And I was like, man, that was a really good chapter because we know that next week we're going to find out. Well, I hope next week we find out. But um, he could always switch it up with the war and we go back to Madara or something before we find out who Toby actually is to build the suspense a little bit but we've been waiting so long to find out who Toby really is and I know a lot of people are gonna say Obito because of what's been happening lately with Kakashi saying how can he have this eye even in this chapter Kakashi was freaking out like it can't be and Guy had to snap him out of it but I just think it's too predictable. I think um, Kishimoto is throwing that out there so that people think it's him because he's going to pull a swerve at the end of it. But yes, Naruto finally destroyed Toby's mask and it was crazy to see Toby take damage. I mean, the only time I can think of Toby ever taking damage in this series was in his fight with Conan where she used like the one billion tags or whatever it was to cause that huge explosion. That's the only time, time I can think of Toby actually getting hurt. So for him to be taking damage like this and Naruto coming at him with the attack and he's like, shit. Um, he sees that he's, you know, just, he's up against these guys and they are stronger than he thought. He underestimated them. So I do have to say that out of the three big chapters, um, Naruto is probably my favorite one this week. Um, but all three were good. On to Bleach 504, Before the Shadows. Overkill uses Chojiro's Bankai. And it's it's basically a lightning Bankai. And he can summon lightning from the heavens, I guess. And it just hits Yamamoto. Dead on. He doesn't try to dodge it. He just takes the attack. Which was pretty badass. He was a huge badass in this chapter, like always. And while he's being blasted with this lightning... Um, Hisagi is going to try to help him, but he tells him not to. And we get a flashback. We get a young Yamamoto, well, a younger Yamamoto. And we see how Chojiro wanted to be his right arm. He wanted to train with him. He wanted to help him. Things that Yamamoto couldn't do, 
he wanted to be able to do for him. So we see all of this and how Chojiro learned his Bankai and actually gave Yamamoto one of the scars on his forehead and this really impressed him and how he trained for years and years on this Bankai to perfect it to make it even stronger so when it cuts back to the present Yamamoto is just taking this attack overkill is yelling at him like just die already you're old and Yamamoto just looks up and says Chojiro you would be really disappointed because of this Bankai you've worked all these years on was never this weak and then he just basically burns off Overkill's skin with one attack. Um, pretty impressive, but that was it. That was the end of the chapter. We just see him get pissed off and attack, and I guess he just burned him, and we see like a lot of his skin and bones like just sitting there. So, I'm not really sure what to make of this. I mean... It's just hard to believe that Overkill would die so easily. Maybe he's not dead, but he definitely looks dead. <laughs> but it's just hard to believe that Overkill would die like that if he was strong enough to beat Chojiro, who they just hyped up as being a really strong fighter and having a really powerful Bankai. Um, but then again, when the Quincy showed up, they stole the Bankai, and they were caught off guard. The Shinigami didn't know about that. So I guess that does kind of make sense, but I don't know. Still, it's just hard to believe that Overkill would die from one attack like that. So I guess we'll have to see what happens next week. Um, one Piece Chapter 678, Inside the Lab Lobby of Building A. The uh, cover story is Karabo getting taken away in a barrel by Jinbi. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this, but... It's a good cover story so far. Um, the G5 close up the hole to prevent the poisonous gas from getting inside. We see Brooke use his ghost form to go outside and check around. He says that the gas is everywhere. Anyone who goes outside would die. Um, the G5 try to capture the Straw Hats. They tell them to surrender. They try to capture Brownbeard. Brownbeard's just happy they know his name. And I thought that was pretty funny. Nami has Law switch her and Sanji back to their original bodies. Sanji doesn't want to go. And Law tells the G5 to escape through door R66. He says they have to escape within two hours. Apparently he's going to do something big in the lab. And they need to be out of there. Um, uh, Luffy goes after Caesar. And the Straw Hats go to help the kids. <clears throat> and they want to split up and go save the children and Smoker tells Toshigi to go help them save the kids and get the G5 soldiers out door R66 and Smoker says that he's going to go after Virgo and I was thinking to myself the way this was set up with Smoker saying I can't I can't beat Virgo legally so I'm going to just go after him and I was thinking, Smoker might die. This might be it for him. He's been a major character this entire series, but then again, so was Ace and Whitebeard in different ways. And Smoker was always after the Straw Hat Pirates, and now he doesn't really have a need to do that. So I was thinking, this could be it for Smoker. And Virgo does have his heart. But either way, it should be a really cool fight. So Zoro tells Luffy the new world starts here, and Luffy says that he will be careful. And then Luffy is running on this bridge, he comes across some of Caesar's guards, the guys in the weird suits, and he kind of defeats them by spinning like a top. He spins his legs like a top. I didn't really care for that attack, I thought it was a little too goofy. He was kind of flying like that, I don't know. It was Maybe I saw this wrong, but that's what it looked like to me, and I didn't really care for that, but... I do like how they set it up, how everybody's got different stuff. Zoro and Usopp are going one way, the Straw Hats have split up to go rescue the kids. They're probably going to get into some fights. Um, Smoker's going after Virgo, Luffy's going after Caesar, and Law is going to do who knows what. But I think this is going to be one of those chapters, or one of these arcs, I said a few weeks ago how 
you have like the huge big arc, and then you have kind of a mini arc. And Fishman Island was kind of like that mini arc. So this one's probably going to end up being huge with some major stuff happening, like Thriller Bark. Even though it was kind of a mini arc, um, Kuma showed up, and it turned into a big arc. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is what happens with uh, Punk Hazard because it's just building and building the stuff with um, Kid and Scratch Man and their alliance. Um, all of that stuff is just building up and building up. So I really did enjoy this week's chapter. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Um, hope you liked this review. Leave your thoughts on this week's manga chapters in the comments below. And thanks for watching.